How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video we're going to be going over the Game Week 14 team selection as well as taking a look at how the squad got on in Game Week 13. We're going to look at our potential transfer plan going into Game Week 14 and finally looking at that team selection with the finalized captaincy which is actually quite a predicament going into Game Week 14. I also wanted to just mention apologies if there is some background noise during this video. It is currently raining where I am so if it does affect you, I do apologize, but if it doesn't, just simply enjoy the soothing background noise to this video. Let's get into it. So a new season calls for a new sponsor, but here on the Davy FPL channel, we like our old. Uh, so I've brought back the old sponsor, OneFootball, but with a completely new revamped app. Uh, yes, OneFootball has gone over a complete marketing revamp, new logo, new everything. Uh, I've checked it out, looks really good. They kind of took the old app, but just made it better. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. If you wanna go check them out, link down in the description below to go download the app. If you don't know who they are, they're the biggest app on iOS and Android. Android, so go check them out. I personally use them so I can recommend them from a personal level. So the game week 13 review and how the squad got on, we managed to get 51 points, which is above the average. And that showed a green arrow, a small green arrow to about that 2.2 million mark. It is another consecutive green arrow, which I am happy about. It wasn't as big as I'd hoped for, but unfortunately the whole captaincy situation didn't pan out exactly as we expected. We'll be getting on that too a little bit, but starting off in goal, we have Martinez who yet again returned a lovely clean sheet there also one bonus point to his one save point which took him to a total of eight points which is really nice to have uh, just always nice when your keepers returning consecutively and hopefully he can go into this festive period returning a couple more clean sheets uh, with those final fixtures that look good for Aston Villa the rest of the defense we have Chua with five points managed to get an assist there for the Giroud goal which I was really happy about but then kind of Chelsea went on a little bit of a bad run and managed to concede there so not too happy with that whole run that happened with Chilwell but unfortunately we have to take that on the chin luckily it wasn't a double up or even a triple up on that Chelsea defense as I know a lot of FPL managers actually are doing and then as we spoke about in that game week 14 preview you might have to look to ship one on but with Chilwell at least he's getting an attacking return that complements his uh, expensive price. Cancelo there with one point and that kind of relates to the whole captaincy situation. I was honestly expecting a massive result there for Man City against West Bromwich Albion but West Bromwich Albion came out of the gates with a very good game plan. Uh, parked the bus a little bit but they showed some good attacking form a little bit late on in the game and what's come out since then is that Slavin Bilic has actually been sacked. So a little bit unlucky for us there. I think that the West Bromwich Albion players were playing to show the owners that they wanted their manager to stay and then they still sacked him anyway. So Maybe if they had played on their usual form without that fire under their bellies, we would have had a good result there for Man City, but unfortunately that wasn't the case, and that resulted in Cancelo unfortunately only having one point. From an attacking point of view, Cancelo was also lacking a little bit. I thought his crosses weren't up to scratch, and overall Man City didn't play at their best, but unfortunately, as I said, we just have to take that one on the chin. Then we have Kyle Walker-Peters with two points, uh, another game against Arsenal, another red card, but unfortunately they had already scored before the red card. wasn't like the Burnley fixture where they hadn't scored before the red card and basically that was a clean sheet guaranteed after the red card but we'll take this one Walker Peters unfortunately not getting any attacking returns as well so there was only two points but I think at the start of the game week if you had told me that they would concede to Arsenal I probably would have told you that that's quite realistic even though Arsenal's form hasn't been the greatest then we have Taylor who was one of the heroes of the game week coming on uh, for the bench Torres with a lovely clean sheet there I was kind of the best result possible I was kind of working out what I wanted from this Aston Villa versus Burnley game and I think a clean sheet for both of my defenders was probably the optimal solution unless Ollie Watkins maybe got a goal and then Taylor also got a goal something ridiculous like that but the most realistic example was to have a nil-nil so I was quite happy with Taylor coming off the bench with those lovely six points. Going to the midfield there was a little bit to talk about here with the Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne I caused a little bit of a stir there with the captaincies on either of teams kind of people who captain Kevin De Bruyne and people who captain Bruno Fernandes were competing against each other I think I was just because of the couple of days between the two played unfortunately Bruno Fernandes didn't get a return I think you can consider yourself a little bit unlucky there if you were a Bruno Fernandes captain considering that Manchester United scored three goals and he wasn't involved in any I saw a lot of the heat maps and the stats coming out of that game for Bruno Fernandes and it seems like he was dropping quite deep it was a little bit of a weird position because I usually see him on the edge of the box getting in the box getting shots 
but it seemed like he was kind of fulfilling a lot deeper of a position and that's not really what I want from Bruno Fernandes because when he's high up in the field he's just so involved in those goals I think he's one of the main talisman in the Premier League so for them to score three goals and him not to be involved was quite a weird situation we then move on to our captaincy decision which was Kevin De Bruyne it was kind of a no-brainer for me um, I was always going to go for Kevin De Bruyne because it was the best fixture in my team against West Bromwich Albion at home but Man City simply just didn't perform there De Bruyne actually had a, quite a sloppy game had a couple couple of shots, a couple of chances that I thought he could have done a little bit better on, um, but at the end of the game, he put it on a plate for Gundogan and Sterling. Crossed it in from deep, a uh, simple header for both of those players, but they just simply couldn't convert the chance. I mean, we could have had two assists there for the Man City midfielder, and I would have probably taken that as a captain, but we just kind of ended up with his four points. A very weird score as well. Uh, four points is quite unusual. Maybe you thought he got an assist and a yellow card, but no, he got no returns, just two bonus points, which I think simply Simply shows how he was creating so many chances those Man City forwards just couldn't convert them and unfortunately that doesn't come down to the player it comes down to his teammates that's gonna have to be something we monitor maybe if his teammates continue to be out of form then we might have to consider Kevin De Bruyne and whether we keep him on our side and whether we actually can trust them on the captaincy and then finally we have Mo Salah who scored a lovely goal absolute banger a brilliant shot there no only joking it was a heavy deflection from the Spurs defenders. I was quite lucky on that one. I don't think Salah had the best game in the world. I think out of those two options, Mane was definitely the more lively, uh, but that could have just been maybe the Liverpool game plan targeting that left-hand flank. Uh, you must also remember that Robertson is playing incredibly well right now, so maybe they wanted to pressure that left side. Salah was actually pushed out quite wide at times, uh, which I usually don't really prefer. I prefer when he's in and around that box, uh, getting those sneakier skills and potentially getting a shot on target. His shooting was also quite lackluster, but that's just Mo Salah. He kind of has to get a lot of chances to score one uh, but I'll definitely take those seven points that he managed to offer and then going up front to the forward department we have Bamford with six points now you might call me a little bit greedy but considering that Leeds scored five goals uh, only one goal from Bamford is a little bit disappointing it was a little bit of a lucky goal Rodrigo headed it onto the post and Bamford got the deflection uh, but I'll always take that as an FPL manager but as I said maybe a little bit disappointed with only six points considering how many goals were scored we then have Colvard Lewin who managed to get an assist I do believe was quite a lucky assist but I'll definitely take it was kind of a goal mouth scramble there uh, but five points are always welcomed and then uh, finally we have Ollie Watkins who managed to get a yellow card for coming on the field when he wasn't called which is quite remarkable there uh, but he simply just seems so lost currently uh, I just keep on thinking back to that Liverpool game and how I thought this could be a massive striking option but since then he's kind of offered nothing and definitely uh, if we were on a wild card I would definitely be taking him out but still has some nice fixtures coming up so maybe Maybe he can repay us for our patience. And then finally, going on to the bench, we have Ferran Torres. It's probably going to be the main talking point of this video and probably the main subject of the comments down below. But yes, he was benched and did not come on. I actually thought that he had a better chance of starting than Foden uh, because of those Champions League starts and just the fact that he hasn't been getting many minutes, but he's actually been playing quite well. And overall, Man City haven't been playing at their best. So maybe this means that he starts next game week, but I can't tell you that. We never know with Pep Roulette. Maybe he just goes back to the same starting 11 and hopes that they do better but with Torres he didn't come on so Taylor came on so maybe that was a good decision overall uh, but definitely a wasted free transfer in that case we then have Pusuma with three points quite a dead game there and then Ferguson with zero points now, I think Ferguson is back at training because Roy Hodgson said that the only player that was out was another player not Nathan Ferguson so we could have some hope of him starting potentially quite soon but I'll believe it when I see it so going on to the transfer plan, my current thinking right now is to bank a transfer. The general consensus in the community right now is to prolong the amount of time and maximize the transfers you have. So maybe within the next week or so with those two free transfers, we might get some more news about a potential further double game week happening a little bit later on in the season and that maybe we could prepare for. Maybe the chip strategy changes according to that news, but right now there's a lot of ambiguity so we don't really know what to do. So my current thinking is just to bank a free transfer so that we go into game week 15 with with two and we can see what we do with that if I was to make a transfer right now the two fires to put out are going to be Ferran Torres and Jao Cancelo because just basically these two players face a rotation risk we have Cancelo here that has actually started quite a lot of consecutive games which kind of means to me that a benching is on the cards um, so he could be on the way out maybe to someone like Sufal who could be a good option we also have Bo in there that could come in for Torres the only thing is that West Ham play Chelsea this week which I'm not too keen about I'm never favoring a team that that plays a top six opposition. 
uh, West Ham could go out and smash Chelsea for all we know. Has kind of been the FPL season for that, but I think after this game week, we have a nice round of fixtures for West Ham, which I might use those two free transfers to bring in two West Ham options, considering how good those fixtures are. But these are the two that I'm a little bit worried about, but I could simply just play them and hope that they start. So this is how the game week 14 team has set out currently with no free transfers made. I'm probably not going to be making a free transfer as I mentioned. I will update you either on Twitter or if we do a deadline stream if I do. Uh, but this is how the current lineup goes. I'm not going to go through every position. Maybe we'll just talk about certain positions and main talking points. I think the talking points are Cancelo and Torres. Now Cancelo might start. I think he's got a better chance of starting than maybe Torres. Torres is a weird one. It seems like he's not really the favored winger in that Man City lineup and uh, maybe more of a utility player but then even even when he is benched he doesn't come on so maybe have a little bit of faith there to just start him if he does come on maybe we could get a return if he does start that'll be excellent but I don't really favor him over Walker Peters or Pesuma so Walker Peters faces Man City there now Man City haven't been playing at the best of form and Southampton have been so maybe it would be worth maybe starting Kyle Walker Peters but my brain is just telling me not to we do have some other good fixtures there with Chaw against West Ham which could go either way and then we have Watkins against West Brom so hopefully West Brom I know that Sam Allardyce has come in who's known for his defensive strategies so maybe he can hold off uh, Aston Villa but I'm hoping that maybe Oli Watkins can finally get a return here then the main captaincy decision is going to be between Fernandez and Salah for me you don't really trust De Bruyne at the moment with how good Southampton have been playing and then we have Salah and Fernandez now Salah faces Crystal Palace who are usually a bogey team for Liverpool so I'm a little bit skeptical about that one but I think both of these two are great options to go by Fernandez is worrying me a little bit with how he performed against Sheffield United but I think that Leeds are going to be a little bit more attacking maybe a uh, Bruno Fernandes can get a little more space in that midfield and uh, that hopefully could lead to some more FPL points. So currently, I'm on Bruno Fernandes. If you do own Harry Kane or Human Son, I probably would opt for them, especially Harry Kane because he has a great scoring record against Leicester. I think it's something ridiculous like 16 goals in 10 games or something like that. So I would definitely opt for Harry Kane. But in my own team, I think that Bruno Fernandes is potentially the best county option that I do have. I will definitely let you guys know if I do make a transfer. So just stay tuned to my Twitter or if we do a deadline stream. So this is basically right for the video guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you're new and have not subscribed yet. I'll be checking you guys on my Twitter page at DaveyFPL or on the deadline stream if I do choose to do one. I'm going to be signing off. It's been DaveyFPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.